So guys, it's been a pretty crazy few days regarding Star Wars Hunters. On Monday, we got the announcement for Season 4 and the content coming for it and the overall update. Yesterday was even bigger with Season 4 actually starting, but we also got the announcement of PC release for this game, which is unbelievable. If you haven't seen that already, I do have a video going over it all from yesterday. But also, where have you been? There's an actual page on the website that goes over things, which I'll showcase in a minute. But in today's video, with the season having been out already, for a day now I wanted to sort of give my first impressions but also go over the patch notes because I actually haven't done that yet so I thought I'd just combine the two videos essentially but before I do get into it make sure you are subscribed to the channel with the notification bell turned on so that you don't miss out on any more videos but without wasting any more time let's jump straight into it. So first of all on the main page here for the game on the top here you'll see Steam this has got all of the PC details that you need to know. It also reveals some Season 5 content as well, which I'll go over in another video. But regarding the patch notes, here we are. Nox, the Zabrak Archer for Season 4, is our hunter. She is a lot of fun, honestly. Her story is really cool with a past with the Order of the Nightwind, which are a group of thugs that attack Boba Fett and Fennec Shand in the Book of Boba Fett. So she's got a really cool story. Her abilities are a lot of fun. She's got a great character design and some of her cosmetics are absolutely incredible. So overall, I am very, very happy with her so far after having only played probably like 10 to 12 games with her. The new map is called Endor Aftermath, and this one is a pretty fun map. It feels like it's got inspiration from a few of the other Star Wars games like Battlefront, especially Research Station 9 from Battlefront 2, with there being the bunker side of it and the landing platform and the at, -AT but also the actual research station itself at the end of the map and how it felt sort of outside of the actual research station while still in the inner walls. So it's definitely a fun map. I wouldn't say it's one of my favourite maps, but it is another very solid entry into the rotor. So I'm very, very pleased with it. There are a few new limited time game modes available this season as well. Scrap Salvage is one of them. Arrow Assault and then Heart Wars had some changes. Scrap Salvage was available straight when it was a bit like Bank from Call of Duty, where if you kill someone, they drop essentially scrap or in Call of Duty's case it's dog tags you go around and collect scrap off of people and you have to go to a deposit station to deposit that first team to 100 wins there are three colors that you need to be aware of blue purple and yellow the blue scrap gives you one point the purple scrap is worth five and the yellow scrap is worth 10 and in one of my games yesterday on stream I had about 26 at one point in one deposit which is pretty crazy but this mode honestly is so much fun. I really want it to become permanent as well at some point. And if you guys feel the same, please do make sure you say that in the Discord server or just out and about in general. Because the community team will see it and pass on that feedback. So fingers crossed it will become permanent because I'm having an absolute blast so far. Arrow Assault isn't available just yet, but it does sound like a lot of fun. Everyone will use Nox and essentially a headshot will instant kill someone. And it's just all bows and arrows, which should be a lot of fun. The change to Hutball I'm a big fan of. It essentially allows you now to use traversal abilities whilst keeping the Hutball. So Reeves, Ruthless Pursuit, Slingshot's Dash Ability, Diago and Amara Vex's Grapple. So you still get to keep the Hutball on your person whilst using his abilities now, which which is such a good change honestly i feel like hutball now will be a lot more dynamic and interesting and a bit more action-packed so i'm excited to give that a go when that happens as for some balancing updates first of all i really like that they've actually got developer notes for all of these changes now so we get a bit of an insight into the decisions behind these things so i'm very very happy about that but overall there aren't too many changes amara vex has got a bit of a buff which i'm really happy to see because i haven't been playing her a huge amount since launch but honestly she's become a bit more viable now and just a bit more interesting so very happy with those changes however small they might be. Sentinel has had another nerf but not too much it's just essentially that Slingshot and Chaos will now no longer be knocked down through their shields by Sentinel suppressing shot so it's not a massive change to Sentinel but it does help the likes of Chaos and Slingshot which personally as users of those two I am very happy with that. Charles had a minor nerf as well with his dig in passive where the knockback reduction has gone from 50% to 30% and finally Reeve's saber throw has been nerfed as well by 5 damage to each point. It does now mean that she will not be able to one hit a score at any more 
or a fellow Reeve, which actually I find a bit of a shame because I quite liked doing that. And doing it was super satisfying, but, but never mind, I suppose we will have to be a bit more skillful when using it now, I suppose, with that. But there we go. They are essentially all of the changes to the Hunters, so not much. I am surprised to not have seen a Pillbush nerf, I will say. I think that could still very well be needed, but I think we'll just have to wait and see how the next few weeks go. As for cosmetics, there are tons of new cosmetics as always. New updates to the rank stuff. Chaos has been added to the Hunter's Path. The Hunter's Path has also been increased in terms of your overall like need. You need more Hunter tokens to unlock a Hunter now by quite a considerable margin, I think, but that doesn't impact me personally since I have them all anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, and the season length, it's worth noting, goes up until January 20th. 28th. So the next update for the game will be January 27th. And then there are going to be several events throughout. This Feast of Prosperity event, I think, has already started anyway. I think it's to do with Thanksgiving, whereas this Tree of Life event's more Christmas and Life Day, so that should be good. There's going to be another chain event this season to do with the High Republic, which should be interesting. Aaron, Chaos, and Reeve will have some outfits. The Reeve skin is like a Lorna D. Nile inspired skin, which looks unreal. And then Aaron and Chaos have got sort of High Republic themed, like Jedi sort of stuff as well which is cool so looking forward to those and then the clash event not one but there's two so the first one will be nox versus reeve and the second one i think is nox versus diago but i don't know if that's actually confirmed oh yeah there we go reeve and diago in two separate clash events so a lot more going on this season than the last couple seasons i think and obviously with the pc release of the game confirmed and content for season five announced already as well there's a lot to be excited about I'm very, very excited for the future of Star Wars Hunters, and if you are as well, then make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already. That is it from me today, though. Let me know what you think of the Season 4 update in the comments. Thank you all very much for watching, and may the Force be with you, always.